All right, so welcome to day one of becoming a better hair cutter in seven days. Today, we're going to work on scissor technique, but also understanding your scissor. Why is it important to understand your scissor? Well, there's so many different aspects to not only the tool itself, but picking the right size scissor, and then the relationship between your hand and the scissor and the comb and the scissor. So that's all the things that I wanna go over in day one, and I really want you to practice these things um, all week long. So even though we're doing something different every single day, all seven days, uh, I still want you practicing all this stuff really every day that you can. Uh, when you don't have a client in between things, when you're sitting watching TV, you can do all these different techniques. So the first thing I wish I was taught in beauty school was that you don't actually put your thumb all the way in the scissor. So that is number one. You want just the edge of your thumb uh, in the scissor, and then that allows a little bit more flexibility to move the scissor around in your hand. Also the same thing here, you don't wanna shove your ring finger really far in the scissor. That kind of jams everything up and tightens everything up. You want everything nice and loose in your hand. Now, you get the uh, ring finger, it's just a little bit under the first knuckle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this scissor and just shift it back towards my hand, and that'll get me a nice firm grip on the scissor without putting my thumb in there. You wanna make sure that the scissor does not move um, without putting your thumb in. So work on that with me now. Okay, you got that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our thumb, but just the edge of our thumb. You can see we designed, this is the FSE Elite Series scissor. The thumb is a 3D thumb. So the back of it kind of gets out of the way and I can put my thumb right in the edge of the scissor just like that, and then we can open and close it. So then I just work open and close, just like that. So now, when we're in between clients, we're watching TV, we're doing whatever, we bring our scissor with us, and we just work on this motion, just moving the thumb. So that is gonna get us the proper technique for when we are cutting on top of our fingers, like this, when we're cutting palm to palm, when we're cutting scissor over comb, all of those things become just with this motion. Then, as you get a little bit more advanced with it, um, and you get more comfortable just moving uh, your thumb, now, no matter how you put the scissor in your hand, whether it's half in this way, uh, on top of your fingers, you're still only gonna move that one blade. That's the mechanic of the scissor, that's how the scissor is built. It's really hard to cut straight lines when you come in chomping at, it's hard for me to chomp, but it's, it's hard when you come in chomping at the hair and you can't get close to your fingers because you don't have the proper technique. And when you can't get close to your fingers, you lose tension and you don't get those nice crisp lines that you're looking for within your haircut. So being able to work close to your finger because you're confident and you have that one blade only moving, that creates a lot more success in your haircuts. Once you feel comfortable and confident with just moving the one blade, where I want you to go next is I want you to be able to palm the scissor. Uh, palming it could mean a lot of different things. Could mean just putting it in your palm like this, could mean tossing it back like I do here, and then being able to bring it back to you is kind of up to you and what you're comfortable with. So if you're here palming, now you have your comb in these fingers here, and you've got your blade pointed up, that's fine. Um, that some state boards require that, so get used to that. Then what you're gonna do is, if you wanna palm it, all I do is I move my pinky out of the way and kind of free up the tang, or the, the finger rest here, move my pinky out of the way, and then I toss the scissor back into my hand and grip it just like that in my pinky. Now that frees up these three fingers. If you wanna palm it the regular way, you can go right here, just put it into your hand here, and now you've got these three fingers to work with as well. So it's really up to you what you're more comfortable with. Now, bringing the scissor back is something a little bit different as well. So when I toss it back into my hand like this, I like to release it with my pinky and flip it back around. That's what I do. But you also could bring it back here just like this and then just grab it with your thumb and bring it back to your hand that way. So many different ways to do it. All of it is fine. You got your three fingers to hold your comb, just like this. So now I've got my comb and I can work my comb. This is another technique that you can practice just like this, moving your comb back and forth because you're gonna wanna use the wide teeth and then you're gonna wanna be able to flip it and use the fine teeth of the comb. Then you pull the comb over to the other hand and then you can just come right back out with the scissor. So 
That's one way. Otherwise, you do it this way, palm it back, add your comb. You can still flip it and turn it just like this, and then bring it back into your hand just like this. That. All right, so now we've got our mechanics of just moving the one blade. We've got our palming mechanics, and now we're gonna add in uh, adding the comb. Uh, that is added to these three fingers, just like this. So what I wanna do is I wanna put all those things together. So comb the hair, put the comb in my hand, put my hand up like I'm gonna cut, bring the scissor back around, and pretend to cut on top of your fingers. Bring it back, palm the scissor, bring the comb, comb the hair, pass the comb to your hand, up like you're gonna cut, palm it back, and here. So it should look like this. So here, cut. Here, and you can go in your fingers and cut. Here, cut. And the reason we do this as reps is to get more comfortable with having this scissor in our hand and feeling more confident that we're not gonna cut ourselves and that we're using proper technique. So when you're watching TV, when you are waiting for your next client to come in, um, after you eat some lunch, whatever you're doing, uh, just grab the scissor and the comb and you can work this and do this. Doesn't cost you anything to do uh, except your time and you can get better and better and more confident with your scissor and comb. Also, if you have a mannequin laying around, you can always add them into it. So you can just comb up the hair uh, and work and just work on getting those lines on top of your fingers just like that and then recomb and then just dust and cut about a quarter inch off again. So you're not actually really ruining the mannequin, you're just working on your exercise and using a little bit of hair at the same time, uh, which can also be helpful. Uh, little trims, don't take off a ton of hair, just work on the mechanics of bringing this scissor back around and cutting with. So now we've talked about the importance of scissor and scissor mechanics and all of that, but I also want to talk about the importance of the comb. Because to be honest, this is actually the most important tool that you can have uh, in your toolbox. So the first one is a wide tooth comb like this. And then the second one is a fine tooth comb. These are both uh, on our website. You've probably seen them on there. The 705 comb is the wide tooth. And then the 703 comb is the fine tooth. We also have a 701 comb, which is a fine tooth as well. Um, they're smaller combs because it's easier for me. We're working with smaller sections when we're working with precision cutting. So you don't need a super long comb. And in my opinion, a super long comb can get in the way. So if you like longer combs, that's fine. If it's working for you, it's fine. Uh, but if you feel like your combs are getting in the way, definitely go with a smaller comb as you work. Now, why would I have a fine tooth comb and a wide tooth comb? Well, anytime I'm working with thicker hair and longer hair, I like to cut with wider teeth. Also, if I'm cutting dry hair, I like to use the wider teeth. If I'm cutting curly hair, I like to use the wide teeth. If I'm cutting fine to medium hair and I'm doing precision cutting on medium to shorter length, I like the finer tooth comb to work through that because that allows me to get a little bit more precise with my sections, precise with my combing up to the end. If you think about it, the wider teeth are gonna detangle, but they're gonna grab bigger groups of hair at a time. So when it gets to your hand, by the time you've combed it all the way up, you might have to do extra combing to get a nice clean section all the way up to your hand. So if you go with the finer teeth, it's gonna dig a little bit deeper. It's gonna separate the hair a little bit more. It's gonna organize the hair a little bit more. It's gonna give you a more precise look. When you're going into curly hair or thicker coarse hair and you're using the finer teeth, it's really hard sometimes to get through those sections. So I go with the wider teeth because it's just easier to comb through those sections. And usually with curlier hair, I don't need as precise of a line. I actually like having a little bit of up and down in my line, a little bit of diffusion to create a little bit softer shape. So the last thing I wanna discuss with you guys for day one is scissor length. So scissor length is really important and it's most likely not what you were taught in beauty school. What I was taught in beauty school is to measure the length of scissor by the palm of my hand and that'll tell me what length I should get. It's important to understand that no matter what scissor you get, the handle is going to be the same. So it's not changing the handle size and that's really the only thing that's in your hand. So length of blade has to do with what type of hair cutting you're doing. If you're doing precision cutting, I go with a five inch scissor because I'm cutting little bits of hair at a time. So not past my second knuckle because I want even tension. Also, when you look at the difference between the five inch and the six and a half inch, and you think about precision cutting and I'm trying to get into tighter spaces, if I switch to the six and a half inch scissor and I'm trying to cut just before that second knuckle, my hand has to be this far away from the section, which is sometimes okay, but sometimes you're in the nape of the neck and you can't 
get your hand in that position. So I highly recommend for your precision cutting using a five inch or five and a half inch scissor, and then six inch and six and a half inch for barbering, shorter hair, scissor over comb work, working on top of the head, longer layers, um, all of that stuff a longer scissor works great for. So with this information, what I want you to do for about 10 to 20 minutes a day, palming your scissor, passing the comb over, pretending to comb, bring the scissor back, and then work on cutting with that one blade moving. Start small, just work on moving the one blade. Once you advance from that, then work on palming. Once you get palming down, then work on passing the comb and working hand to hand just like that. Uh, and get more confident with this. You can even work on point cutting that way uh, and just work the scissor just like that. Um, this will help build your confidence. This is the number one thing that I actually did in beauty school that I wasn't asked to do, but it was something that I really liked doing because I wanted to figure out how to palm my scissor and work with it. And it was something that really advanced me quickly behind the chair because not only did I look more confident, I was more confident, I could focus more on my work and less on the relationship between my scissor, my comb, and myself. So work on that. Tomorrow we got day two, we're gonna work on proper sectioning. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you need to do to section the head the correct way so you get a great result every single time. No more worrying about holes in the haircut, no more worrying about one side being longer than the other. I'm gonna solve all those issues for you guys on day two. So get to work on this technique and I'll see you tomorrow.